Hey, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine just makes perfect sense. We continue our discussion on biochemistry playlists. In the previous video, I've talked about vitamin B3. Today, we'll talk about vitamin B3 deficiency. Pellagra, baby. You know that vitamins aid in metabolism and they are cofactors. Vitamin B3 or niacin is water soluble. Therefore, deficiency is more likely and pellagra is more likely than vitamin B3 toxicity. B3 is the same as niacin, the same as nicotinic acid or nicotinamide. Niacin has two functions. At a lower dose, it's a vitamin. At a higher dose, it's a lipid-lowering agent. Many governments now fortify their bread with niacin or vitamin B3. That's one of the reasons pellagra is very rare nowadays. Tryptophan can become niacin, it can also become serotonin. That's why patients with carcinoid syndrome, tryptophan is being converted to serotonin all the time. And we have wasted all of the tryptophan on the serotonin. We don't have any more tryptophan to produce niacin. Hashtag niacin deficiency. Hashtag pellagra. Vitamin B3 is crucial for reduction oxidation reactions, the oxyreductases. Vitamin B3, direct benefits, indirect benefits, direct benefits, it can treat pellagra, it can treat hyperlipidemia. Indirect, cofactor for reduction oxidation reactions, especially the NAD and the NAD peoples. Where did they come from? From niacin. This is important for catabolic reactions, this is important for anabolic reactions. Niacin or B3 sources natural and artificial. We have talked about this before. Remember that the most common cause of pellagra is eating only a corn-based diet because a corn-based diet is deficient of niacin and tryptophan. Niacin, nicotinamide, tryptophan enter into the mitochondria and now we have NAD and NADP. Please watch my previous videos. Absorption of niacin was discussed before. Remember that these three enzymes require five cofactors. NAD is here, it comes from vitamin B3. Niacin will give us NAD and NADP. These are really important for metabolism, which is an active process. Therefore, metabolically active cells are the most affected. The more metabolically active you are, the more affected you are with vitamin B deficiency. And where are the metabolically active cells? In the GI and skin, because this is rapid cell turnover, and in the brain, because it has high energy requirement. And that's why the symptoms of pellagra are diarrhea, dermatitis, and dementia. Medicine makes perfect sense with medicosis perfectionalis. To learn more about all of these enzymes, please watch my previous video. As you know, NAD and NADP are important for DNA repair. Therefore, when you have pellagra or niacin deficiency, do you think your skin can repair itself? No. Hashtag dermatitis. Do you think your GI can repair itself? No. Hashtag diarrhea. Do you think your brain will have its high energy requirement? Forget it. Hashtag dementia. Whether you eat carbohydrate, fat, or protein, they end up as acetyl-CoA. Enter into the TCA cycle, we need NAD to become NADH. And then we'll take this age, hashtag proton pumping, to convert ADP into ATP in the electron transport chain. If you don't have niacin, you don't have the step, and you don't have energy production in the ATC. The role of NADH in the electron transport chain was discussed in the previous video. Pelagra literally means raw skin. Pella from pellis is skin in Latin, I believe. And agra means seized. Remember podagra in gout? The big toe is seized. Isn't that doozy? Here is the most important slide in this freaking video. What are the causes of pellagra? Primary causes, secondary cause. What do you mean by primary? There is a decreased intake of vitamin B3. What do you mean by secondary? The intake is okay, but there is decreased absorption or there is an inborn error of metabolism that's messing up the stuff. Okay, primary cause, decreased intake of what? Of niacin and of tryptophan. Remember, no cash, no problem. No tryptophan, no niacin. Example, malnutrition, and my mnemonic is three A's, abject poverty, alcoholism, and anorexia. And then the secondary normal intake, but decreased absorption. Give me examples. It could be a malabsorption syndrome, such as inflammatory bowel disease, celiac disease, malignancy, short bowel syndrome, etc. Tumors such as carcinoid syndrome, because we are consuming all of the tryptophan to make serotonin and not niacin. Heart knob disease. There is an inborn error of metabolism. We cannot reabsorb the neutral amino acids, such as tryptophan. No tryptophan, no niacin. 
bariatric surgery, dialysis, and drugs such as isoniazid, especially long-term use, 5-FU, FU back, pyrazinamide, 6 mercaptopurine, and phenytoin. Carcinoid syndrome, what's the problem here? The problem is that all of my tryptophan has been converted into serotonin, therefore I have lots of serotonin and lots of 5-HIAA in the urine, hydroxyindoleacetic acid, but I have less tryptophan being converted to niacin because all of it has been consumed in this path and not this path. Therefore, I will end up with vitamin deficiency, hashtag pellagra, diarrhea, dermatitis, dementia. This was the story of carcinoid syndrome. Other causes of pellagra include isoniazid. Isoniazid can cause pellagra by two mechanisms. Number one, it can inhibit a vitamin B6. Of course, it causes vitamin B6 deficiency. No vitamin D6, no NADPH. Great. Isoniazid can also lead to decreased pyridoxal phosphate, the famous PLP. With no PLP, no tryptophan. Of course, no tryptophan, no niacin, no sauce, no problem. I heard that one day in a Taco Bell. Tryptophan to niacin. There are many drugs that can inhibit the conversion of tryptophan to niacin. And when you inhibit the conversion of tryptophan to niacin, this is called pellagra. What are these drugs? Isoniazid, of course, we have talked about that before. 5-fluorouracil, the famous chemotherapeutic agent. Pyrazanamide, the famous anti-tuberculous medication, anti-TB. Also, isoniazid is anti-TB. Phenytoin is anti-seizure. 6 mercaptopurine and azathioprine, these are immunosuppressants. Chloramphenicol is the famous or the infamous antibiotic that can cause gray baby syndrome. That's why the color here is gray. What are other side effects of pyrazinamide? Hyperuricemia. 5-fluorouracil, 6-mercaptopurine and azathioprine. All of them can lead to bone marrow suppression and increase your risk of infection. Chloramphenicol, isoniazid, and pyrazinamide were discussed in detail in my premium course called Antibiotics, available on my website, medicosisperfectionalist.com. My antibiotics course is on sale now until the end of the month on my website, medicosisperfectionalist.com. Heart knob disease, an inborn error of metabolism. Is it inherited or acquired? It's inherited. It's congenital. It's autosomal recessive. There's decreased carrier protein of neutral amino acids in the kidney and GI. You cannot absorb or reabsorb neutral amino acids such as tryptophan. No tryptophan, no niacin. Hashtag pellagra. Diarrhea, dermatitis, dementia, and eventually death. Diagnosis, increased urine level of neutral amino acid because you cannot reabsorb them. They are lost in the pee. And treatment is, if the patient has no niacin, give the patient niacin. If the patient has no tryptophan, give the patient tryptophan. A lot of it. Vitamin B3 deficiency, prevalence, wherever there is, abject poverty, alcoholism, strict reliance on corn, Africa, China, India, and rural South America, at least in the past. As people today are getting slightly better nutrition, Compared to the past, we are seeing less and less pellagra. Symptoms, diarrhea, vomiting, dermatitis, dementia, and death. Diarrhea, dermatitis, dementia, and eventually death, the four famous Ds. Also, you can have disorientation and delusion. Stomatitis can happen with B3 or B2 deficiency. Inflammation of the mouth, glossitis, red tongue. The way I remember the patient on my exam, if they say the patient came from a very poor country, the problem is probably malnutrition. If the patient came from a very rich country, from a very rich family, and he or she has pellagra, it's probably alcoholism. How do you diagnose pellagra? History and physical, the patient is malnourished. You, you like A good doctor is a good observer. Alcoholic, a good doctor is a good observer. Anorexic, carcinoid, and heart nub or medications. That's why medication is part of the history. Family history is part of the patient's history. How to diagnose it by using labs? We can try urine. You will have decreased urine level of N-methylnicotinamide. That's another niacin. Decreased level of 2-pyridone over N-methylniacinamide ratio. In the serum, you'll find decrease in methyl nicotinamide. In the red blood cells, you can measure something called the erythrocyte NAD over NADP ratio. How do you treat the patient? If the patient has no niacin, give the patient niacin. And of course, correct the underlying cause if you can. Clinical pearls, stomatitis can happen with vitamin B2 deficiency or vitamin B3 deficiency. That's why we call this pellagra and we call this pellagra sign pellagra, which means pellagra without pellagra. It's like decaffeinated coffee. The most common cause of thiamine deficiency is eating a strict diet of white refined rice or bread. The most common cause of niacin deficiency or pellagra is eating a strict diet of corn-based food. 
Medicosis in the kitchen and throughout history, how tortillas saved Latin America from pellagra. Are you kidding me? Actually, I'm not. If you look at grains, they have something called niacin or niacetin. Niacetin is a freaking protein and it's a source of niacin in the grains. However, it's not available. The bioavailability sucks because it's bound to a complex and this complex called hemicellulose. Hemicellulose is bound to niacin and they form a complex. You cannot easily absorb it. So how can we re release niacin from the bondage of the hemicellulose? Easy. Soak the grain and cook the grain in an alkaline solution. They call this process nixtamalization. Who named these things? And this nixtamalization is how you make tortillas. And this is common in Mexico, Central America, South America, and among the native peoples of the Americas. I think I'm now an expert on Mexican food. I should open a restaurant called Medicosis Tortillas. No pelagra, no problema. Please forgive my stupid jokes. Medicosis beyond medicine. Pelagra in humans will give you a red tongue, but pelagra in puppies will give you a black tongue. My knowledge extends beyond medicine, man. From tomorrow morning, I should ditch Gray's anatomy and start reading about the anatomy of the donkey. Why does pellagra cause diarrhea, dermatitis, dementia? Because the metabolically active cells are the most affected because now they do not have NAD or NADP. In the next video, we'll talk about a mnemonic about vitamin B3, and then we'll talk about vitamins in a nutshell, a quick review of vitamin B3. These are some pearls for you. Please pause and read. Also, my cardiac pharmacology is heavily discounted right now. You can get a free sample. And until the end of March, you can get a 50% discount. Use the promo code CARDIOFARM50. This is just available for a few days. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionist, where medicine makes perfect sense.